is Heather French. I am an associate professor of clinical pediatrics at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This program discusses apnea of prematurity, including a discussion of the types of apnea, the pathophysiology of apnea of prematurity, and the diagnosis and management of apnea of prematurity. In the first module of the program, we will discuss different types of apnea commonly seen in neonates and their etiologies. Your learning goals for this module are to be able to define apnea in neonates, describe the different types of apnea commonly seen in neonates, characterize the epidemiology of apnea of prematurity, and create a differential diagnosis for apnea. Apnea is defined as the succession of breathing for greater than or equal to 20 seconds. Shorter events lasting less than 20 seconds can also be defined as apnea if they are accompanied by a decrease in oxygen saturation or bradycardia. The exact definitions of bradycardia and desaturations continue to be areas of research, but desaturations to 80 to 85% and a heart rate less than 80 beats per minute have been used in the literature recently. While apnea of prematurity is one of the most common diagnoses in the NICU, it is worth noting that the definition of clinically significant apnea continues to be an area of debate in the neonatology community. Apnea is considered a developmental disorder because it is due to physiologic immaturity of respiratory control and is inversely proportional to gestational age. Apnea is classified into three categories, central, obstructive, and mixed. Central apnea is characterized by the succession of breathing without any evidence of upper airway obstruction. In obstructive apnea, respiratory effort is noted by chest wall movement, but there is no airflow detected due to an obstruction somewhere in the upper airway. Mixed apnea is a combination of both central and obstructive apnea. What usually occurs is an episode of central apnea followed by upper airway obstruction caused by delayed activation of upper airway muscles once spontaneous respiratory effort resumes. Mixed apnea is thought to be the most common type of apnea in preterm infants. In the neonatal population, central apnea is related to immaturity of the central nervous system. The preterm brain, brainstem, and spinal cord have fewer neuronal connections, poor myelination, and immature chemoreceptor function and response, which leads to uncoordinated breathing patterns. In the figure, the red box highlights characteristic sleep study findings in central apnea. There is a succession of both airflow and diaphragmatic excursions, which is followed by a drop in oxygen saturation. Obstructive apnea in preterm neonates presents clinically with the preservation of chest wall movement and diaphragmatic excursions, but no notable airflow as depicted in the highlighted area in the figure. Obstruction to airflow is due to the lack of coordination of respiratory musculature, neck flexion, nasal obstruction, and poor muscle tone in the pharynx, the most common site of upper airway obstruction. The pharynx is the most collapsible portion of the upper airway, and central regulation of pharyngeal tone is important for maintaining airway patency. The trachea and larynx are more rigid structures and are less common sites of obstruction. Mixed apnea consists of central pauses followed by obstructed respiratory efforts. In this figure, mixed apnea is demonstrated. Beginning at the top of the figure, Central apnea is followed by an obstructive apneic event, which leads to bradycardia and desaturation. During the central apneic pause, there is no rib cage or abdominal motion noted. During the subsequent obstructive apneic event, there is evidence of both rib cage and abdominal activity, but ineffective respirations are present, leading to both bradycardia and desaturations. Apnea should not be confused with periodic breathing, which is characterized by regular recurring cycles of breathing that are 10 to 15 seconds in duration with cyclic pauses that are self-limited and ventilation, heart rate, and saturations are not usually impacted. This pattern repeats itself for at least three cycles and often many more times than that. The figure on the right, a neonatal sleep study, shows fluctuating respiratory rates as indicated by the red and blue waveforms with preservation of heart rate, the green waveform, and oxygen saturations, the black waveform. Periodic breathing is a benign condition for which no treatment is needed. Like apnea of prematurity, it declines in frequency with advancing gestational age.
The incidence of apnea of prematurity is inversely proportional to gestational age. It was noted in an often cited observational study in 1981 that essentially all infants born at less than or equal to 28 weeks gestation are diagnosed with apnea. In infants born at 29 weeks or older, the proportion of infants with apnea decreases with increasing gestational age. However, it is worth noting that 20% of infants born at 34 weeks gestation will also have episodes of significant apnea. The same observational study also noted that apneic spells stopped by 37 weeks postmenstrual age in 92% of infants and by 40 weeks postmenstrual age in more than 98% of infants. An additional study by Eichenwald et al. published in 1997 noted that the population of infants with apneic episodes persisting beyond 38 weeks was higher in infants born between 24 and 26 weeks gestation compared with those born at or after 28 weeks. The authors also noted that infants diagnosed with BPD may have delayed maturation of respiratory control, prolonging apnea for as long as 42 to 44 weeks postmenstrual age. Apnea is never normal in a healthy term infant. In preterm infants, apnea is often the result of immaturity of the respiratory control system, but it is important to note that apnea can also be a presenting sign of a whole host of other diseases and pathophysiology that affect this population. A thorough physical exam and consideration of other etiologies causing apnea is essential. Please pause the recording and look through this list of causes of episodic or prolonged apnea. This is not an exhaustive list, but does cover the majority of etiologies leading to apnea in preterm and term infants. All these disorders produce apnea by direct depression of the central nervous system's control of respiration, by disturbances in oxygen delivery, or due to ventilation defects. It should be noted that gastroesophageal reflux is not on this list. The association between reflux and apnea is unclear, and studies to date do not definitively link them in a causal relationship, and pharmacotherapy for GERD has not been shown to be of benefit in preventing apnea. It is important for you to understand what types of consequences apnea of prematurity can lead to. The hypoxia, bradycardia, and perfusion changes that are associated with apnea of prematurity can damage maturing tissues and organs. While the effects of fluctuations in respiratory rate, heart rate, and oxygen saturations on growth and neurodevelopment are not well defined, both animal and human studies have documented the ability of intermittent hypoxia to activate pro-inflammatory cytokines and cascades. These pro-inflammatory processes can create disturbances in bone, metabolism, growth, retinal development, cardiorespiratory status, and neurodevelopment. This area of research is challenged by ascertaining whether the outcome of interest is due to the events of apnea of prematurity or whether the premature, vulnerable brain predisposes an infant to have more cardiorespiratory events. In this module, we defined apnea in neonates, discussed the different types of apnea seen in neonatal patients, characterized the epidemiology of apnea in neonates, created a differential diagnosis for apnea, and briefly discussed the consequences of apnea of prematurity. This concludes Module 1. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.